Then the second impact of the single payer, besides this lower the healthcare cost in one time, lower from here, down here. Like I said, it's more than 10%. For Maine, this could mean even as much as $1 billion because you're spending approximately $10 billion. If you can save 10%, you're talking about saving a billion dollars in healthcare costs. If, I said, I did not promise you can, okay? I said if Taiwan's experience can be e extrapolated here. Then through the single payer, you have a uniform payment system and uniform rates. I won't get into that in technical details. And Taiwan is able then, by doing that, is able to control the rate of inflation to the healthcare expenditures. And through these efforts then, Taiwan found its healthcare is, can be sustained. And the, the Taiwan's healthcare cost rate, inflation rate, is at least 2% less every year than the United States. Again, if you, you can do the calculation if the, your healthcare cost in Maine goes down by 2% per year, I, I, I did not, uh, let me shift gears on you using United States as example. That means roughly about $50 billion. If the United States can lower the rate of inflation rate for health expenditures in the United States, the United States will spend $50 billion less. And what would that do for the employers, just thinking about? That, was, that would cut their cost of doing business and it will make them more competitive. And meanwhile, you're providing this insurance to the people in a comprehensive way that should improve their health status, that make enable the children to be able to attend school more on, on a regular basis with fewer sick days, and also workers do not have to take sick leaves. These are what countries look for. That is, how do I make my people more healthy but keep the cost under control so we can afford it? Is Taiwan a perfect system? No. Taiwan is not a perfect system. It still faces several challenges. One, we recommended Taiwan move away from fee-for-service payment method, the task force recommended. But during the legislative period, the president called me to tell me he would not be able to push that ahead. We recommended they move away from a fee-for-service payment system because we know by evidence around the world is in, that method is inflationary. <coughs> it encourages and incentivizes the providers to do more, regardless the patient needs it or not, because the more you do, the more revenue you will have. All the countries in the world are trying to move away from a fee service system, payments method, but it's extremely hard. It's also hard for Taiwan. Simple reason, doctors, hospitals don't like it. They do very well, thank you, under this system. And they have a powerful political voices. So Taiwan did not move away from a FIFO service system. Taiwan then had to move toward so-called global budget system to control the cost. But the, 
create certain kind of distortions and so forth. It's not really the best way to do it. But more importantly, fee-for-service payment system maintains a fragmented healthcare delivery. Because if I'm a solo practice under fee-for-service, I want to compete against the hos community hospital. The community hospital want to compete against the tertiary hospital because I want to hold on to the p patient and so I can have a higher income. Meanwhile, our healthcare delivery system is arcane. Our health system, delivery system, is the right one for the early and middle 20th century. When people have episodic illness, so you are sick, you go see a doctor, you get treated. But today, you and I are suffering more from chronic illness, hypertension, diabetes, cancer. These diseases require us actually to have continuity of care as well as prevention, emphasize primary and secondary prevention. What you, we call the managing the health rather than curing the disease. A fragmented system where the doctors, community hospital, and the tertiary hospitals are each one on its own, it deters and impairs the continuity of care and also actually create duplication in and waste such as repeated tests and so on and so forth, which you know well. Because Taiwan maintained the fee for service payment method, Taiwan has not been able to integrate its healthcare delivery. Taiwan still has a fragmented <coughs> healthcare delivery system. And that's a challenge Taiwan faces in the coming years. So I hope I gave you a, a general picture on why Taiwan decided to reform its health care system, what was done, and the, some of the major results, and what we learned from Taiwan. Then let me uh, quickly move to what, what, uh, what's going on in Vermont. Uh, Vermont is a neighboring state. Vermont has the similar problems that you have, or what Taiwan had in the early 1990s. And Vermont wants to achieve universal coverage and affordable health care, just like Taiwan did. And uh, but, but, uh, but Vermont add on some other goals. Vermont wants to create a healthcare delivery system that's community based. That means very locally based, emphasizing primary care. But the services are integrated. So in other words, they want to shift their services toward the local level, toward primary care, but primary care has to be integrated with hospital services and the, then also tertiary care. And it also integrated downward toward social services like medical homes, which I heard mentioned earlier. And <clears throat> The Vermont anticipated affordable care, and that was going to pass through Congress already. So Vermont want to maximize the amount of revenue that Vermont can get from the federal government. And the Medicare, 
Medicaid, and affordable care. So as a state, they want, the state wants to generate as much revenue from the federal government as possible through the different health programs. So Vermont decided to commission an outside group to do this. And I understand they went against a group that is impartial, not mired in the political complexities of Vermont. So they gave me and my group completely, complete independence. They only set out their goals, set out the parameters in the laws, Act 128. So after that, they said, you have complete freedom. We want you to reach these goals, but also operate with these basic parameters like community-based primary care. They want a reform plan that's based on evidence. We have to show concrete evidence what works, what doesn't work. They want us to draw on the worldwide experience as well as experience in other states or over the United States because many states are trying different things. So Vermont wants to learn what are the other states doing, and where they do it well, and what mistakes they are making. The Vermont Project commissioned us to develop three options, not one, because it is the legislature and the governor have to decide which one may be best. It's not a technical group like the group they commissioned me to do. So we are required to develop three options. But one of the three options they gave us this freedom. They say, you come up with what you think would be best for Vermont. One of the options they want us to develop is a single payer, universal insurance coverage. That's one of the two they specify. But the third one is you come up with what you think is we call the most politically viable and practical for Vermont. So how do we approach uh, the timing is I have to submit a plan by January 1st and the, uh, this coming year. <clears throat> they basically gave us six months to do it. So it's a very hurried job. Let me just conclude by telling you how, how we approach this. First, I want to map out what's feasible politically feasible in Vermont. There are many interest groups. There are two major political parties in Vermont. And Vermont's governor is a Republican, the legislature are Democrats. What's that viable political space to create a major reform. Employers have a view. Employers want the cost controlled. They want the cost affordable. But the expenditure by the employers or by patients is the income to the doctors and hospitals. They want more. This group wants to pay less. This group say, pay me more what's viable between the people with different economic interests? What kind of compromise is possible between these groups? 